Rose is Logan Murphy and today I'll be showing you how to set up a template uh, based on the jQuery theme. So what I'm trying to go for is make a theme that is based on this date picker here. Uh, it looks like this date picker. So what we're going to do is take this link up here, paste it up here, and we'll have this uh, web page here. And we are just going to use a debugger tool, um, which you can use in Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome. Um, I'm just using Internet Explorer because it's built in. Uh, so uh, the first thing you want to do if you're using Internet Explorer, this refresh button, and then you can click on this, and you'll see all of these classes over here. So what we're going to do is create a template file, and we're just going to make new JSP file template.jsp. And since this is going to be our template, we want to clean it up a little bit. Get rid of this. I usually like to put this in lowercase. Uh, we don't really need that. I'm going to change this to template. And we need to link to our CSS. Let's just get the link to everything while we're at it. CSS and jQuery UIs. <coughs> so that that's part of our template. We don't have to copy paste it every time. So we have that, and so when we're looking at this, we want to notice we have, we want to recognize sections. So we see that there's this section that contains everything. There's this head section, and there's this content section. So we're going to create a div, and another div, and another div, and we'll format it. And those divs are just going to have classes. So. Like I told you, like I've recognized, is this is the one that contains everything, this is the head, this is the content. So let's use this to select the thing we're interested in. And we want to just find classes that we think are going to be uh, essential in getting the correct look. So I see that UI widget adds a font family and a font size, so that would be important to me. So UI minus widget and I also see that this has a color border and a background uh, so I'm going to also use UI minus widget minus content so we'll scroll down and UI corner all looks like something that would because that gives me rounded corners so UI minus corner minus all so we'll go skip keep scrolling down. We're not really interested in the day picker class. Okay, that looks like uh, all the classes we would need and let's just for now let's put something in here. So shop content. So I was putting these in the wrong class, so I'm gonna just move these. Save it and we will just run as server finish and here it is in the gray box that we want uh, it looks like the page so far so next thing we have to target is this head bar so we're gonna go back to our template the GSP and look for the class we think would be important so um, since this thing is inside of this thing it's going to inherit a lot of the properties this div is inside this div, so we don't really need to do UI widget because this already has UI widget and it only has a font family and font size, so that's going to absorb that. Um, keep going down, so here's widget header, so that's what's giving it its uh, the properties that we want. Widget header, scroll down, see what else we're interested in. So there's also a corner all for this, so UI minus corner minus all. Now this isn't inherited so we have to add it ourselves. We keep scrolling down and it seems like that's everything for that section so we'll save it and we will come back here and refresh and here's our head bar. Now there's some things that we did miss um, for example there's a spacing that comes between this and this so we have to figure out what how big that spacing is um, so we'll use this and we'll assume that it's on this whatever is giving it the space and we're just going to look for either a padding 
upward margin and that'll be the thing that's changing it so we see that this has a padding uh, top and right um, so we're just going to take that 0 0.2 cut it or copy it and we'll go back to here and we will add a style type equals uh, text slash CSS and for now it'll be inline eventually I'll externalize it and we will give this an ID and we will CSS select that by well this doesn't need the pound CSS select by ID and set the padding to be 0 0.2 EM like they have it and we'll save it we'll format it save it again come back here refresh and it has that border now that's the border we're looking for so let's max let's maximize it a little let's uh make it show a little bit more so it has the border we want it has this content section now this content section might be it looks like it's a little bit offset over the top uh, so let's refresh this and we'll see maybe well it's not really offset these things are just really big but personally I want this not to be hugging this and I also don't want this to be hugging this which is also they don't have that so see there's a some kind of a padding here as well um, so we will take a closer look at this element here the orange box and see what kind of padding that has if any so here's padding it has the exact same padding so we're just going to give that an ID header we'll just call it and this will also be applied to the header so we'll come back here and we'll refresh it now that has a padding and I would also like to add a padding only because right now the shop is a little bit more right than content is so I'm going to add padding to the content so I'm going to call this content and I'll also CSS select pound content and then we'll maximize this go back here refresh it so it has that offset now okay so we have what's looking like a good pretty good uh, template so let's have a separate selector here that will set the width to be 800 pixels this is just preference and margin to be auto and we'll also set the content uh, min height to be 600 pixels save it and we will come back here and we'll refresh it and this is a really good for showing uh, margin auto so we're just gonna have to come here go here come here so we notice that it's really big so we have to find out why it's really big so we are going to look um, we could actually use the debugger and figure it out so let's do that so we're going to see what the width is actually coming out to be and it doesn't seem to be uh, getting a width and it's because I'm setting it to content when it's supposed to be container so that's something that I did wrong so here it is we have our template now and we will make it better in the next video I'm Logan Murphy I'll see you next time